Hello, my name is Norm Miller and I want to review some essential present value calculations using Excel. And I'm going to do that using formulas as well as the function keys. In the top left I have some assumptions here, n being the number of periods, 10 in this case, i being the interest rate per period, 6 in this case, percent or 0.06 in decimal form, and if it was a monthly interest rate, it would be the 0.06 divided by 12, 0.005 in decimal form. And we always want to use the decimal form. Um, the future value is $10. The payment is $1. The present value is 5.58. I pre-calculated those. Let me show you how I get those. Let's start with the present value of a single sum. The formula for this would be 1 over 1 plus the interest rate, you see B2 referring to the interest rate, taken to the power of B1, the number of periods. So 1 over 1 plus the interest rate taken to the power of the number of periods is a present value of a single sum factor. It will bring anything in the future back to present value. Um, at the discount rate, in this case, 6%. The result with this formula, multiplying this time the future value, times the future value is 5.584, rounded off to 5.58. Now note, I could have done the same thing with a present value function. The present value function requires inputs that are shown here. Let me show you one way of doing that. You simply pull up the function, financial functions, uh, present value, and you see this wizard comes up. For rate, I'll put in the interest rate. Number of periods, I'll put in the N. Uh, I won't put in a payment because I'm simply going to do the present value of a single sum. I'll put in 10 for the future value, and I will stop right there, hit OK, and notice I get 5.58, the same thing that I have there. Now notice it's, it's in negative form. So here I switched it by saying minus the present value to make it work out the same on a positive basis. And of course, Excel assumes it's an inflow or an outflow depending on your plus or minus signs. Let's go ahead and look at um, the present value of an annuity factor. It's a little more complicated formula. This is the formula here where you see again we have an interest rate compounded but it's a slightly longer formula. We use the interest rate twice in this formula. The number we get in this case 7.36 is the present value of one dollar per period over ten years. 7.36 it's the factor times the one dollar payment. Now notice we get the same thing again by using the present value formula. In this case it's the present value at the interest rate, six percent, for ten periods and the payment B4 is one dollar. So the present value function comes up with the same result. Now why would I use a function in one case and a formula in another case? Uh, you can use the functions. It's just important that you know where they came from. And in case you ever want to change anything, you'll understand better how to change it. But you can actually use either one. Now this next function is a mortgage constant, MC, mortgage constant. The mortgage constant is 1 over the number above in C10, which is the present value of annuity factor. So what you see here is that a mortgage constant, which is the amount of payment that you would need to make to pay off the interest and the principal on a loan over a certain number of periods, that annual mortgage payment expressed as a percentage of the original loan in this case .13586795 which we would multiply times a loan to 
to come up with our periodic payment, a mortgage constant is nothing but the inverse of a present value of the annuity factor. And in this case, <coughs> it's this number right here, but I could have used the function key, payment at the interest rate for the number of periods with one being the payment right here. So I could have used the payment function and I get the same result. Now in this case if I wanted to make that positive I would put a minus there and it would come out as follows and that's the payment per dollar of loan. That's a pretty important function. <clears throat> Next is the future value of a single dollar amount taking it from the present to the future. In this case one dollar is taken to the future for 10 periods at 6%. So if you look at it, it's 1 plus the interest rate. And oh, I see I have a little math error, so I'll correct that, but it'll be same same result. Just put the plus sign twice. So it's 1 plus the interest rate compounded, in this case, for 10 periods. So 1.79 times whatever we have in the present will be what it's worth in the future. Um, in this case, if it's $1, uh, well, let's go ahead and, and take the number. Um, in this case, it is a present value of $1 per period, and we're taking that here to the future so 5.58 equals ten dollars in the future compounded for ten periods at six percent interest. That's what that result tells me there. Using the Excel function I see that the future value is a function of the interest rate, um, the number of periods, the payment, and the present value. So in this case we get the same exact result using a future value of an annuity function. One dollar for ten periods compounding at six percent will be thirteen dollars and eighteen cents at the end of ten periods. Now there's another factor, sinking fund factor, which tells you how much money you need to put away each period to equal a dollar at the end of a number of periods. Now first of all you see that a sinking fund factor is the inverse of the future value of an annuity factor. So I simply take that number and I take the inverse of it and that tells me how much money I need to put away to equal a dollar at the end of, in this case, 10 periods, compounding at 6%. If I had done it using this, the uh, Excel functions, I would have solved for the payment necessary to equal a dollar in the future. So in this case, it's solving for a payment that equals um, that equals $1 at the end of 10 periods compounding at 6%. The last function that I think is important is the internal rate of return. It's that yield that brings all the future returns from the beginning uh, investment and all the cash flows uh, on any investment back to present value such that they exactly equal the initial investment. That is, all your future returns when discounted at the internal rate of return will equal the initial investment. In this case the number is 32 percent. Where did that come from? Using the internal rate of return function key, I discounted at K9 which is right there. Let's check that again. K9, oh, this is um, K9 to N9.
this 32% is the internal rate of return guessing at 10% using K9 to N9. All right, what is K9 to N9? These numbers right here. So this is my initial investment, $500. I put in as a negative. These are my total returns. And when I solve for the discount rate that makes these three numbers equal to the initial investment, I've solved for the internal rate of return, 32%. So the answer is, if you invest 500 and you get back at the end of one period 200, at the end of two periods 300, at the end of three periods 400, and that's all you get, what is your annual average compounded yield? The answer is 32%. I also think there's two other functions you should know, the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP. The VLOOKUP is the vertical lookup. In this case, the function is to look up over a column of numbers based on a trigger. In this case, the trigger is 4 as my input. And what I want to find is the D in the lookup table. So the answer here is what corresponds to the number 4, and the answer is D. That's a V lookup, vertical lookup. The horizontal lookup, in this case, is looking up K and it's going across here and telling me what is below the K, in this case, 300. So horizontal lookups compare information in rows. Vertical lookups compare information in columns. The last thing I want to show you is an if statement. The if statement is as follows. If, then you have a logical rule, such as something is equal to something, greater than something, less than something. And if that rule is true, then you have a result that uh, could be uh, as simple as uh, the, the word yes, or it could be a 1, and it could be a 0 if it's false, or it could be something that you add up if it's true and you don't add up if it's false. Um, but an if statement is a very, very useful statement for contingent math calculations. So these are the Excel functions that are pretty important to know, and I hope this little spreadsheet and introduction has helped. Thanks.